today we are making little quilted zip pouches. This has probably been one of my most requested patterns to make, which is quite funny. Um, so I finally got round to making a pattern for you all, and I've also found the perfect technique to insert a zip into a bag like this. So I can show you how to do that, and you get a really nice neat edge at both ends. None of the zip is going to be poking out anywhere that you don't want it to be, and the pattern includes quite the number of different sizes. Obviously you don't have to download the pattern, it means so much to me when you guys do, it just supports my little business and helps me produce more patterns for you guys. I am kind of obsessed with making these now, they make perfect little presents for friends and family, and I just love hiding all my bits and bobs in these little zip pouches. They're also really great. If, like me, you use quite big tote bags all the time and you're prone to getting things lost in them, you can keep all your valuables in a little bag like this and then put it within your tote bag and it's much easier to find all of your things. So I hope you find this video useful. You can also use this technique on my toiletry bags. Um, I'm pretty sure it would work for all of them. So it's a good little technique to learn for zips. I'm really quickly going to run through the different sizes in the pattern. So the first one is a very diddy mini one, perfect for jewellery or a little coin purse. Then this one is probably my favourite size, I'd say that's good for, at the moment I'm storing my hard drives in it, um, but you could probably put, I don't know, all your keys, wallet, everything to go in a tote bag. Next size up is a little bit bigger, you could actually use this as a bag. If you make like a little thin strap to go with it I think that would actually look really cute just just as a little bag or as like a crossbody bag the next two are good pencil case sizes one large pencil case and a small pencil case then there's a larger square one which would probably fit some iPads um, but also could fit like skincare if you're going away or makeup all sorts of bits and then the last one is a very handy size because this actually fits my laptop in it so I can fit my laptop, my big headphones, charger, another charger and it all fits in here and it's, it's a game changer. So those are all of the different sizes you can make within the pattern. So yeah, I'm going to get on and show you how to make them. I'm just going to quickly show you how to print out the pattern if you do decide to download it. So the file I've got open here is compatible with A4 or US letter size paper. You just need to make sure the scale is set to 100%. It's not double sided and I like to print out one page to start with just to check the size and then I go ahead and print the others. Once you've printed out that first page you can check that the 5cm matches the 5cm or that the three inch matches the three inch. Then just go ahead and print out the rest of the pattern. The instruction booklet will tell you how to arrange the pages, but we need some tape and some print stick. And I'm just gonna start by removing one of the edges of the paper. I like to just use scissors. I find it a bit easier than a guillotine. All of the pages have a black line around it so you can easily cut around that. Then you're just going to want to glue one side and match up those registration marks. Once they're all glued together I go ahead and add some clear tape just along the joins so that when I cut them out all of the pattern pieces stays together. And then you've just got to go ahead and cut out all of the pattern pieces. So to make these pouches you'll need a closed end zip and all of the different lengths of zip are listed in the pattern and it doesn't matter if yours is plastic like this or metal like the ones I'm using it doesn't matter what the width is just as long as they have a closed end I probably wouldn't use an invisible zip either because I don't think that would work so now that all your pattern pieces are cut out I'm going to choose which size I want to make and go ahead and find my fabric there's lots of information on the pattern piece itself with the zip length and how many pieces you need to cut out. You will need an outer fabric, a wadding, and a lining fabric. So I'm going to start by cutting two of my outer fabric, larger than the pattern piece. This is to allow for shrinkage when we start quilting. And then I cut the same size pieces out in the wadding. I then cut the zip end tab and the zip pull whilst I've got my outer fabric out. And then I cut out two pieces of lining and then we can get started on the quilting. So I used fusible wadding, which makes life so much easier because you don't have to tack it into place. 
So I go ahead and iron my outer piece of fabric and then iron that onto the piece of wadding before taking it over to my sewing machine and quilting my design. For this one I've just chosen to do vertical lines two centimetres apart from each other. So there we go, those are the quilted pieces. Then you just want to pop them back on top of each other and put the paper pattern piece back on top and cut around that. And now you'll have two really neat quilted pieces ready to go. I'm just popping my label on before we move on to the next part. Now we're gonna start preparing the zip before we put it on the bag. So you're gonna to wanna to find the zip tab and we're gonna fold it in half, good sides facing. You're then gonna place that on top of the end of your zip, not where the zip opens, but where it's closed at the end. You can add little clip pins to hold it into place before we take it over to the sewing machine. Now you're gonna to need to change your sewing machine foot to be a zipper foot. Alternatively, if you don't have a zip foot, you could actually just sew this bit by hand because it's not very much sewing. So we're gonna find the end of that zip and put the zip foot as close as possible to that end of the zip and we're just going to stitch straight across and when you pull both bits back it should look like this at the end of your zip and then take the zip over to the ironing board and press the end of it flat now you're going to want to find a ruler that has an inch measurement on it and we're going to measure from the start of the zip tab so measure an inch away from that and then draw a line down that and chop it off If the zip tab is wider than your zip, then just trim any excess down so it fits the same width as your zip. Okay, now we're going to take the first quilted piece and our zip, and we're going to flip the zip upside down and place that at the top of your quilted piece. And we're going to use that zip end tab and that should match up right into the corner. Then place one of your lining pieces on top, again matching up all the corners, and pin that into place. Taking it over to the sewing machine, I've changed back to a normal foot here, but if you have a thinner zip, then I'd carry on with the zip foot. We need to make sure we're starting the stitching at the zip end tab, and then go about halfway along, and check you're still in line. And then about two inches from the end, we're gonna put our needle down and open up the zip. You then need to take note of where the last zip tooth is, and mark a little line on top of where you're sewing. Keep on stitching up into that line and you want to stop with your needle down when you reach that marker. Then with your needle down, we're gonna lift up the foot and the top piece of fabric and then we're gonna grab the end of that zip and pull it at a right angle. Once that's pulled out at a right angle, you can put the top piece back down and the foot and carry on stitching. I then like to add some reinforcement stitches just within the seam allowance just to make sure the end of that zip isn't going anywhere. And there you go, as you can see it pulls the zip into the seam and makes a really nice clean edge. The next step is to do a little bit of top stitching but we want the lining to be facing away and all of the seam allowance to be facing the quilted section. So we're not actually stitching on the lining at all, we're just stitching the seam allowance and the quilted top section. And there we go, that's one half sewn in and look how neat that zip is, it's so satisfying. Then we're just gonna go and repeat the process again. So taking the other piece of quilted fabric, placing that on top of the zip and then adding the lining piece as well. Then making sure to line up all of the corners by the zip end tab. Pin that all into place and again, we can start stitching all the way along until we reach the end. But we're gonna have the needle down lift the top part up, make a mark where the last tooth is on the zip, stitch all the way along to there, put the needle down and then pull that end of the zip at a right angle out before carrying on and stitching the rest of the way. And then we're going to top stitch along the zip again, so just keeping that seam allowance pointing down to the outer fabric, folding that down and keeping the lining well away, we're going to stitch all the way along. Then take the pouch over to the ironing board and press the lining away from the zip. You can also give the top a little bit of a press. We're going to start assembling the bag together now. So the first thing you need to do is open up the zip. Then we're going to take both of the quilted pieces and put them good sides facing. 
and then we're also going to put the lining pieces together good size facing. Roughly pin it into place but we're going to focus on the zip ends first and make sure they're lining up. So the bulk of the zip tab should be pushed towards the lining so that when you finish the bag it's sitting inside the bag. So going over to your sewing machine I like to just check that the ends are going to be even and sitting in place properly before I go ahead and stitch all the way around. So once I know they're in place, I then go back and pin the bag again and stitch all the way around. This time I'm leaving a gap in the lining at the bottom of the lining of about 15 centimeters. Then we're going to turn the bag in on itself and just check that all the corners are looking right and that the general shape is looking good. Before turning the bag back inside out again and we're going to reduce the bulk. So you're going to want to start by chopping off all of the corners, making sure not to catch the stitching and then really importantly reducing the bulk around the zip ends. So cut as close as you can to the zip, not cutting the stitching again. And then we're going to turn the bag back in on itself and really push out all the corners. And just work your way around the bag, manipulating all the corners so they're nice and pointy. We then need to close up the hole in the lining, so just pull that taut and add a few pins. And then just go ahead and top stitch along that hole. Once that's stitched, we can then put the lining inside the bag, push all of the corners and go and give it a good press. This next part is optional, but I think it adds a nice touch to the bag. I'm making a custom zip pull. The piece I'm using here is actually a bit shorter. I changed it in the pattern after this video. But you want to start by just ironing the piece flat and then in half and then bring both long edges into the center and press those down. Then once you press both pieces into the middle, you press the whole thing on top of itself and stitch the open end closed. I thread that through the end of my zip pull and tie it in a little knot. You can finish the ends of your zip pull by stitching them up, but I quite like to just chop them at an angle and then add a bit of clear nail varnish because that stops them from fraying. And there we have your finished, very neatly sewn quilted zip pouch. So now that you know how to make a zip pouch, you can go and make umpteen zip pouches. <laughs> These are all of the different sizes that come in the pattern. They're such useful little bags and would also make really nice little presents for friends or family. So there we go. That's the end of the video. I really hope you guys enjoyed it. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in my next video. <laughs>